So this tour is four dates. We'll be heading out to Planet Rockstock in Wales. Um, then we're off to uh, Wales to Holland, which is a crazy, we've got a crazy drive over there. Um, and we're playing in Amersfoort at the Flirting with the Blues Festival. Should be really cool. And then we're going to finish up with our last gig in Holland, um, in Tilburg. And that's it in Hayhoe, and that's sold out. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and then we finish the last show of the year is in Clion in France, at a nice little festival. So it's going to be a really cool, fun lot of dates. I mean, every gig is going to be completely different. But you know, once you're on stage and you relax, that's sort of that's sort of where the where the job starts for me. That's the bit I enjoy the most. I've done a lot in Holland. Um, it's been really fun. It's been a mixture of um, TV and radio as well. One day we was in Spain and we had a, a sellout gig at this little club, it held like 300 people and they were mental and the first time I ever did that someone just put, picked up his arms and just carried me into the audience and was crowd surfing. I was like this is a cool feeling, you know, this is, this is cool getting involved with a crowd so I'm going to do that more often. supported a band called Vintage Trouble and their stage show is really high level energy and he like dives into the crowd you know crowd surfs and I thought you know it'd be cool if I could do something like that but a little bit different so I like to take my guitar into the crowd it's cool to get it's cool to get down and personal with the fans because it's a different energy as well when you're down in the audience you can feel what it's like looking up to the band and it's it's fun When I play my guitar with my teeth, it is, it is a tribute to Jimi Hendrix. I know a few people have, have done it, but I also like to do a bit for Jimi in the set. Um, and we do our own version of War on the Watchtower, which I never like to copy a cover 100% when I do it. And obviously that is a cover anyway that's already been copied. So um, yeah, I always like to try and put my own stamp on it and, and show my influence and pay tribute. So that's where that comes from. Well, what I love about Jimmy is the fact that if you put on his records now, he's still so current. 
and he wasn't afraid to experiment with sounds. He, there was no boxing him. There was no, right, you're doing a 12 bar blues and you're doing a whole album like that. He was free, he did what he wanted and, and when he wanted and it was all about the music. And that's where I take that in, you know, influence from. It is all about the music with me as well. I don't want to be tied down to one genre. I just want people to enjoy the music. Planet Rock's really behind us. It's been cool because um, it's a different audience for us that we've got into, especially with the Glenn Hughes tour. That was a big Planet Rock audience. And I think that the audience is different to the audience that we've been playing to, um, which has been amazing. And playing at Planet Rockstock was really cool because we, we felt that as well. We just went there doing our thing. You know, we wasn't going to go all on it. And if people seem to love what we do. And I think if you're true to yourself, people will buy into it and it's been amazing this year that Planet Rock have really been behind us and played our music and you know I want to thank them for doing that because every radio station that gets behind an unknown artist who hasn't had a, a massive hit out there from the 70s or you know, 60s or whatever or a massive hit current right now and they're getting behind and supporting real artists I think that's really cool. So we're at the Euro Tunnel waiting to, uh, to head over now band's got the breakfast, ready to rock. <laughs> Flint in Amersfoort was, um, was an amazing venue. It's a, it's a big, big venue, proper pro, massive PA system, big stage, the kind of venues I like, you know. <laughs> I, I dreamed of playing stages like that and now to be doing that and with our own name not under our own merit and our own fans coming to that is an amazing feeling and it's something that we've worked really hard towards and we've built up over the years, you know, we haven't just shot there. We've done pubs, we've done clubs, we've done music venues with pubs, you know, we've, do, we've done it all to build up to that and we really appreciate that now. Ringo Starr is probably the, the biggest artist we've supported. Um, in the blues world, Joe Bonamassa, Buddy Guy. I got to jam on stage with Buddy Guy. That was that was a lesson and a half. After every show I always come out to see the fans and head straight to the merch stand like the second I stop playing my note I walk either into the crowd or off the stage to the merchandise stand because I want to meet the people you know who allow me to do what I do and if it wasn't for the fans you know behind all of the business and all of that I wouldn't be where I am so that is so important to me and I want to show that I will always be grateful for my fans. Um, so it's cool and it's great to, to meet people and to see them excited after the gig and you know if I went to a gig I'd want to meet you know people who I paid for a ticket for and you know have a conversation with them and see that you know we're just normal people doing what we love. Um, well I wouldn't say normal but... <laughs>
Well, you've got to be like family because you're in each other's pockets 24-7, you know, so that's one of the hardest things to get right about a band. You know, you can have the best players in the world, but if people are not in it and you, you clash personality-wise, then that can be very tricky. But luckily, you know, I'm in a band full of my best friends now, um, and it's just like family. We just have a laugh constantly, and we've, we look out and got each other's backs, so... People can see that on stage as well, that comes across live, I think. That's why I think we're a little bit different. So my band's a tight unit. Um, the longest member of a band, apart from me, is Phil Wilson. Phil's really stuck by me, you know, more than any musician that's ever been in a band. And he's a massive part of my sound and because he's such an incredible drummer. And he's such a great guy to be around on tour and he's always got my back, you know, and we always get through the good times and the bad times and we're, we're like brothers. And then we've got Greg Smith on bass and um, Greg joined the band nearly two years ago now. So pro, a really cool guy, always on a mellow level and, you know, with, you need someone like that um, in the band. He's never stressed, he's always there, you know, with Greg, he always does an amazing gig. You know, you know what you're getting with Greg, and it's really cool to have that positive energy around the band as well. Now on keys we've got Bennett Holland, and Bennett is like the most lovely guy you'll ever meet, you know. He wouldn't harm a fly. Yeah, and uh, not, just, not just about being a good person, he's an incredible musician. He knows so much about theory, so much about songwriting. He's an incredible singer. Especially since Bennett's been in the band, um, my vocals have improved. Um, and doing the harmonies together on stage has been a lot of fun and really enhanced the rich sound to the band and made me realise how important singing is as well, so I owe a lot to all of them. And when we do the big gigs, I got my backing singers who come out and it's a mix up between Christina and um, Tarina and Amy as well, so um, just depending who can do it. Um, that, that adds something really cool to the set, like a gospel-y, bluesy, authentic feel. And when we don't have the singers, you know, we, uh, we really miss them because we, it feels like a big sound and it, it feels great. And the more good people you have on stage loving it, what you do, the more you can push it out to the audience as well. And I think we finally got the balance right of the band and uh, it's fun on stage and off stage. We're off to Tilburg. It's uh, our last show of the year in Holland. It's a sold out one. It's going to be really cool. We've played in Tilburg a couple of times to support the status quo there, Rival Sun. So it's been cool. So we're looking forward to going back in headlining. So it's nice that it's sold out. And uh, yeah, we're all really excited about it. Stop filming right now, this is the, the secrets behind the hair, can't have that. <laughs> These are the secret for the voice on stage. Fisherman's friends. <laughs> Man. Losing, I'm a sore loser. Last night was amazing. It was 500 people sold out. And it was it was just a magical moment. Take Me was spiritual. Yeah, everyone was singing along to lyrics on Take Me. and Christina had a tear in her eye, didn't you? I did. And I, was, oh, I, was, I just had a... 
goat. <laughs> oh, I felt I felt overwhelmed by by the support to hear like someone sing your songs back. You know that you've got so much love and energy into. It's just the best thing ever that our song can connect with someone and mean something to them. It's just it's amazing. It's the best feeling ever. Well, sound checks are really important, um, and it's actually the thing that I don't like the most about touring because I just want to get up on stage and play my guitar and it'd be right, you know, just walk up on and get up on stage and, it, and, and the sound be done. But, you know, it's, it's, we've got to go through it and it takes a lot of patience and it's a lot of hard work to get the sound check right. I'm using in-ears now, so I've got the sounds in my ears rather than the monitors on the floor. But when we used to have the monitors, it was a nightmare because they were feeding back and everything. But now I've got it in my ears, it's cool. It's all about getting the balance right for each instrument. I have the guitar and the keys under that, vocal at the top, bass and drums in the middle. It's just, it's just about, I always think of it like listening to it on the uh, iPod or you know, on, on your headphones. How would you listen to music like that? And I'll try and do that um, with a little bit of life and a little bit of feel, you know, by cranking the amp up a little bit. So I like to get a studio and live mix when I'm doing my sound check. Well, we did a gig in Gran Canaria, didn't we? Yeah, I was speaking English, he's speaking Spanish to us. But we made the night work and people can communicate, you know, even, even if you don't speak the same language. I'm just going to show you my rig rundown that I've been using on tour. First I'll start with my pedal board. This is a, a handmade pedal board made from a company called Pura Viva Custom Pedal Boards, made out in Madrid. It's amazing, they do it however you want. I got Paisley. It makes it so much easier, the input, the jack, it won't come out unless you press it. It's got the, uh, got the Zuma Strymon underneath here that's powering all the pedals, um, probably the best pedal um, power supply I've had. So my main sound that I'm running here is an old uh, Marshall Blues Breaker pedal. This one is the uh, the original one. Everything else is just like, you know, I always imagine it like painting a canvas. You're just painting the colours on top of that sound then. So I'll add my delay. I'm just using a, an Echoplex delay by MXR. <laughs> Um, my next overdrive sound is the Royal Blue Overdrive pedal from Mad Professor. And uh, Mad Professor have really supported me um, from the start of my career. They're based out in Finland, they make handmade pedals. Make sure you check them out, they're amazing. Um, I like subtle pedals that add a little bit of class rather than loads of gain as it was. So this is my sound right now. This is just adding it on top with a Royal Blue Overdrive. <laughs> It's quite touch sensitive, which I like. So then I'm going over here to the, um, the Hudson Electronics. It's called the Broadcast Pedal. It's kind of like a fuzz overdrive pedal. Um, I'm not a massive fan of fuzz pedals, so this is, this is as fuzzy as it will go for me. This next pedal, everyone laughs at because it's uh, the mini crybaby <laughs> wah pedal. But I think it actually sounds better than the big one. It's not always about size. And then uh, just a few more pedals. I always leave this pedal on. This is the Silver Spring Reverb by Mad Professor again. You see, see it's coming a trend. Mad Professor pedals are really cool. 
Um, and this is this is built on the old uh, Fender reverb pedal. Um, and I was using one in the studio a couple of weeks ago. And this thing is awesome and really compares to it because you wouldn't be able to bring the real reverb tank on, on tour because when the drums are hitting hard, it pick it all up. So this really does the job nice. So this is without it. This is just a thing I'm so it's a very dry signal and uh, with the pedal on, so that's a bit of echo. And uh, yeah, the next pedal is the um, is the Octavia pedal, which is um, is really cool. It's, uh, it sounds awesome. <laughs> The, uh, the only other secret I've got going on here is um, is the Shure wireless pack. So I got this um, so I can go out into the audience because I love I love to connect with my fans and you know, I love doing that as part of the show. And I was worried at first because I'm pretty old school. I like to put straight in and, and get my sound. Uh, and I was I was a bit like you know there's there's no wire there. You know it's uh, how how can that be as good? But we've we've a would them and there's not much difference between that and the wire. So. I chose to use this for because it's pretty easy and that's the board. So that's the pedals. I'm going to take you over to the amp. This here is uh, made by a company in England called Victory Amps. This is the V30 MK2. It's a really cool, just clean sort of amp. This is a beast on the road. It's it's easy. I fly with this. It's really cool. Um, 212 extended cabinet here, closed back with the LJ logo on, so it looks cool, sounds cool, can't get more cool than that. So I'll take you over to my baby. So I've just bought this, this is an original 1964 Fender Stratocaster. Um, I've always dreamed of having an original guitar um, and this is just a joy to play. I, I, I tried loads, I, I must have tried about 11, 11 original guitars over, over the years, you know. And this one really took a shine to me. We was on tour in Denmark, and uh, we got, I got it from a, a cool independent shop called Plectrum. You should check them out if, if you're a guitar collector, because they, all, I tried all their guitars and they were amazing. This one is, is really special. I've always wanted a white guitar ever since I saw Jimi Hendrix at, at Woodstock, and this comes from the same era, so it's a real bit of special kit, which I love. And it's nice and beat up. So this is my second guitar, which is also Fender. Um, Fender have, have been great support to me, and it's, it's an honour to be endorsed by Fender. And the reason I wanted this guitar and fell in love with it is because I do I play a lot with a whammy bar, and this guitar can can go really low with a whammy bar, like like a PRS, I would say, um, which is very unique for Telly. I've not seen another one like this, so I'll show you. <laughs> So I've tried a lot of strings over the years. Now I'm 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 been on Ernie Balls and that's it. My search is over with, with that. Because I, I really do think they're the they're the best strings out there. Um, I rarely snap a string now. I used to snap strings all the time live. I'm just using regular tens on this. For years I use like elevens and I think once I even used twelves. Usually just cut my fingers when when we're doing like two hundred shows a year. So the Ernie Ball tens have a real sort of thickness. To, to the string and, and the sound and it, it's crazy how what difference a good set of strings can do. Last show of the year, 2018, Cleon France. And it's gonna be a good one. Getting introduced now, the band already on stage, about to walk on. Thank you for your support. <laughs>
out 2018. We sold out show in France. We sold out show in Holland. It's been good. It's been good. One more can we ask for? Thank you so much for your support. See you again next year. I think on my bucket list is just to keep growing. I think any act that goes boom up to the top straight away will go boom down straight away or people won't appreciate it as much and the way that we've done things and the way that we've built up our, our band and our business is through doing things the hard way. So I like, I like to grow and I feel like if you take time growing and there's no rush to the top then you will enjoy the journey. Um, so I'm enjoying the journey right now and yeah we're loving it, I, I, I can't complain but you know to get to the next level I want to be playing to thousands of people at our own gigs like arenas and I want a top 10 hit and you know we got, we're, we're aiming big you know we're not, we're not aiming small but, but as things are going you know we're really happy.
get all that because I didn't understand any of that. <laughs>